Welcome back, CSC 200 Database Online class to part two of our intro to Python Anywhere, our online IDE for working with MySQL databases. And I'm logged into my Homo RCN account. I'm in the dashboard right now. And last video, we created a database. And it's an empty database. It's called Presidents. And notice that when we have our database, it's going to have my username and a dollar sign in front of it. And we're going to talk about consoles a little bit in this video. And before we jump right into the President's console for the MySQL, I'm going to go into consoles just to show you a little bit here. Because you'll see these terms here, bash and MySQL. And uh, let me actually close one of these here so I don't have any consoles open. Remember, you can only have two. And I'm going to go into bash right now. And you might see this if you work on a Mac and terminal or PowerShell or command prompt on Windows or in Linux and you're going to see the dollar sign and you can start putting in uh, commands in here bash commands and you might not know what to put in here yet and if you just put in like well I'll put in my SQL and see what happens nothing happens if you put my SQL and dash dash version just like you could with like Python and you do that you're gonna see that we have a version here 14.14 5.7 that's all it's doing is showing the version right now. So we're not really in MySQL yet. And to go in through Bash, we're actually going to have to use our username and we're going to have to use our password and things like that. And this is kind of the longer way, but I just wanted to show this first so you're familiar with what happens in a Bash console because you could do this at home on Terminal or in PowerShell or Command Prompt. I'm going to open up my databases page in a different tab here. So I'm going to click on here and then I'll right click or control click on databases and say open a new tab just so I have access to this information and remember here's my my database and here's my host and here's my username and I'm gonna need this and I'm actually gonna copy this because I, I could remember my username but this is long here this is the host address so I'm gonna copy this control C or command C and I'm gonna go back to bash and I'm gonna put in uh, three things here I'm gonna put in well, four things. I'm going to first put in my SQL, and then I'm going to put in dash u for user. And you could put it right after this, or you could put a space. And I'm going to put my username, which is Homo RCN, and you'd put your username here. And then I'll put another space, and I'll put dash h, and this is for host address. And I'll put a space, and I'll paste it because I just copied it. So that's that long address. It's my username dot my SQL dot Python anywhere dash services dot com. And then the last thing I'm going to do here is put a space and put dash P and that's for password. Now you don't put it in yet. You just hit enter or return and then you enter your password. So I'll put in my password, which should be the same as yours, the my SQL admin. And I think I got it right. And if you're in, you're going to see the prompt for my SQL. So that's going through bash. So we had to do some extra work to get in here. And now when you're in here, you could use a couple commands. And I'm going to go back out to the other consoles. But just for now, if I wanted to do something called show databases, and I'm going to end that with a semicolon. So it's all caps just to indicate that we're working in the SQL language, the structured query language. And I'm going to do show databases in all caps with a semicolon. And then I'll hit Enter. And it'll take a second. And then you should see some databases. You'll see the default one. You'll see presidents. That's the one we created. There's also information schema, which is a default, which is in there for, for MySQL. And if you wanted to choose one, you could go in here and say select, and I'll use all caps. And you could just say database. You can keep that in all caps. And if you spell it wrong, you have to backspace. You can't, this isn't like working in a, in a coding environment. So you have to do things correctly or you have to do them over again. So I'm going to say select database and you have to put parentheses. And we don't do that a lot, but for this one we do. We're just going to say select database and then put a semicolon and hit enter. And it's saying null. That means we don't have one chosen. So if we want to choose one, we have to put use and then a space. And then it's going to be this one. We're going to use president so I'm just gonna highlight that I can highlight and copy and paste you can copy and paste in here so I'll put that in there and I'll still finish it off with a semicolon and it's gonna say use 
that database and I'm going to hit enter and it doesn't say anything other than database change so I know I'm using that database and if I wanted to see anything about that database I can say well I actually I could do this again and when I select database it'll show me which database I'm using and I can also do something I'll say show tables that means show any tables that are inside that database and if you remember we haven't made any so we shouldn't have any tables inside there so it says empty set so that's working so that's one way to go into all this so we went in through the bash console and we we logged in to MySQL with a username and the host name and a password and then we picked out our database now that's a lot of work in here so I'm gonna quit out of here and we're not gonna necessarily do it like that but I wanted to show you what it's like to work in the regular bash console because you may have to do that at some point point. and I put quit and buy actually I'm just gonna close this and what I'll do this time is I'll just click right on this now this is easier so we're gonna be doing this so I'm gonna click on this what this will do is it'll take you right into your console for that database so you don't have to do all that username and password and all that that's already done for you so if if you just went here and did select database with the parentheses and put a semicolon you're already in there and it's even showing up here so you're already in there so if you did show tables it'll show empty set so you're already in there so this is the way we're gonna go into our console we'll go right into the console for our database when we work on it then we could start doing things to our database now there's nothing in our database yet so there's not a lot to do so what we are gonna do and I'm even gonna open up my databases tab again matter of fact I'm gonna open up my files tab I'll show you so I'm gonna go over here and I'll look for my files and I'll right click and I'll say open a new tab and I'll, I'll keep this open here and here's my files and remember we made this databases directory in our first in the first video we made a directory called databases and let me actually look at instructions here I have instructions this is early on the one you get will probably be a little more finished but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna upload something called presidents.sql into that directory and then we're gonna actually take that information that's in that SQL file and put it into our existing database so to do that we have to go to my Warren now this is this is older so th this will eventually be newer but just for recording the video I used an older version you're gonna download a file called president.sql.zip and you could just click on it and when you download it you're gonna to need to unzip it so I'm gonna double click on it and yours won't say two yours will say one so make sure it doesn't say two um, I just did a sec I did it a previous time so here I have presidents.sql that's unzipped what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna upload that now to upload that I'm gonna go back to Python anywhere and it's in my downloads right now just just so you're aware you know on your computer it'll probably be in your downloads as well but it's in my downloads and I'm gonna go back to Python anywhere and I'm gonna go into databases now make sure you're in your databases directory and I'm gonna say upload file and click on this button and I'm gonna to go to my downloads there's my presidents.sql and I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna hit open and it's gonna upload it and that's it so it's already uploaded so I don't have to do anything else in here right now so I'm good I'm actually gonna go back to my console and we're gonna use the information in this file to populate our, our empty database it's gonna be a table in there so I'm gonna go back to here now before I do anything I don't know what to do yet I'm gonna to go to my instructions now I have instructions for you so we already did all this stuff so we already have the database here we already have a console started with username president so we already have that set up and what we're gonna do next and we already uploaded this this president so we already have that so what you're gonna to have to do here is just use use this after the MySQL prompt you're gonna say use and you're gonna use your database and the source is gonna be the file that you just uploaded so let's see if we could do this without even copying and pasting it so we're gonna say use and then a semicolon and then source and just remember you have to have the directory in here the databases directory and then it's just the file you uploaded so let's see if we could do that without having to copy and paste it 
So we'll go here and we'll say use in all caps and it's going to be this database. So I can copy this so I don't have to type it. And I'm going to say use that. And then I'm going to do a semicolon. And then I'm going to use source. And I'm going to do a space. And the source is going to be databases forward slash because that's where the file's at. Because we're going to use this thing. So it's databases forward slash presidents.sql. So if I go back here, I can do databases forward slash and then I'll just do presidents and you got to type this correctly dot SQL and I'll put a semicolon and before I hit enter I'm just gonna double check my instructions just to make sure I'm doing it correctly uh, use username database name semicolon source and there's my file hit enter so that looks like I'm doing it correctly so I'm gonna hit enter and I'm getting all these different things here, but I do see that there's 44 rows and I see access denied and all kinds of things here. But what you do want to check to make sure it's okay is you want to say show tables just to see that you have a table in there because we should have a table called presidents with a capital P. So let's do that first. And there it is. And what we can also do is say show all the records or all the columns that are in presidents. So we're going to do select and this means all when we do this and this is in our instructions. If we go back to our instructions you'll see this here. Select all from presidents. Um, all that means all the columns. That means it'll show you all the columns across and it'll also show you everything that's in there because we're not specifying any certain limit or anything like that. So we're going to select all and we're going to say from and it's presidents, the table will have a capital P. And if you spell it wrong, I'll just spell it wrong. And I'll do that. You're not going to get anything. So you just have to do it over. So if you screw it up, you just got to keep doing it over. So select all from, and we're not going to do everything where you have to type it in here. We'll eventually use a code editor, but we'll use presidents and I'll put a semicolon and you always have to hit for your prompt you always have to hit enter and there's our table and now things are a little large right now so they're kind of going across and going under here so if you wanted to see a little bit better you could do uh, control minus or command minus now you can see that looks a little bit better I see I have an ID column a president column first name years and all presidents actually the last name but it's president that person and then there's a first name years in office inaugurated age in, at inauguration state party occupation college we have that stuff there so we have all that so that's our table and there's 44 records so it's not a huge uh, this isn't a huge database here but it's just something to kind of uh, practice with in the beginning so that's all we did was just show our records there by doing that and I think that's all we have to do right now is make sure we get it in there but that's all we have to do for this first kind of exercise. What we actually did is we put we put SQL code that actually created a table in here. That's what this did. It said in our database the source is going to be this presidents.sql file. And if you're wondering what that is, you can look at it. You can go back here and I'll I'll open this in a new tab. So I'll, I'll right click on it and say open a new tab. I had another tab anyway, but if you went into databases and you actually clicked on it, you can actually see the code. And this is the SQL code that created the file. This, and you'll learn how to do this. This created a, created a table with these columns and these are the data types of the columns. And then this is all the information in kind of a comma separated format that's going into that table. So there's our 44 records that are going in there. So that's the SQL file. So that's what actually created our data that's in our database. So we did that. So that's all we have to do for this so far. Now, if you're done here, you could just say quit. And also another thing, you could always do clear if you just do, or I think it's control L. Control L will clear it and it doesn't exit out of the database. It just wipes out. It's kind of like erasing the blackboard. So you could still go in here and say, you know, select all from presidents capital P that is now I have my code kind of small right now but it'll still run that query so everything's still there but now if I wanted to do quit I could close my console 
Now it's still showing it here, but it's actually closed. So now I can X out of that. So now I have a table in my database. And if I go into your Python Anywhere account as a teacher, I can see that you did that. So that's what you need to do at first. And that way, if you have any problems, I could look at that as well. And I could close this up. I don't need the president's SQL file open. So I'm going to close that right now. And here's my databases. And that's all we have to do right now. But for now, I just wanted to make sure that you can do that to get started.